Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple today released a surprise Wednesday update of macOS Sequoia 15.4.1. In this video, we're gonna go over what is included in the update, and we're gonna do a live demo installing on a T2 Mac and an Apple Silicon device. And if you have an unsupported Mac running OpenCore Legacy Patcher, we're gonna cover that in a quick preview. Let's jump in and get started. Welcome to my channel. I'm a macOS platform engineer for a Fortune 500 company. I've been using Macs for over 20 years and I produce update videos, troubleshooting, and walkthroughs for new and old Macs. Thanks for stopping by the channel. So when I say a surprise update, normally Apple will release their public updates on Monday or sometimes Tuesday. So Monday came and we got macOS Sequoia 15.5 beta 2 and iOS 18.5 beta 2, so no public releases. And Tuesday came, nothing on there either. So when we got something on Wednesday, it was really interesting, this is definitely a surprise. It wasn't the full slew of updates. So for example, macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura did not get an associated update. iOS did 18.4.1 iPadOS 18.4.1, iOS 17, 16, and 15 did not get an update. HomePod OS was updated to 18.4.1, tvOS was updated to 18.4.1, and so was VisionOS, but we did not get a watchOS update and is still on 11.4. My 2020 M1 MacBook Air that is running macOS Sequoia 15.4. It is file vaulted and logged in with my test fake Apple ID to be able to provide an experience that a normal user would go through. Now, now the first thing that's new is the new software update pane. Now we get to see it in action because what we see here is the update available here and we have the ability to see the installed OS which is 15.4. We can see our security and automatic updates in here. Automatic updates are now automatically enabled after you install Mac OS Sequoia 15.4. Now if you're on a supported Mac you can leave that on if you want. Click on this eye here and again I don't like this eye. I like these buttons so most users understand what this is. They don't know if this is like an informal thing or what, but you can click on these things here to get more information. And this is the change. Normally you would click more information here to get to that screen that you now get when you click on the eye. And now you get the full information here. On this screen, there's also a change because notice how it says once downloaded, the update will take about 20 minutes to install. This previously said 30 minutes. And I've already mentioned multiple times that's not accurate at all. And that's also why I test the oldest Macs. So we see the slowest possible experience that you'll get. So if you got an M4 Mac Mini Pro, for example, you're going to see the fastest experience, but I would rather show what the least you would expect for the installation time. So that's definitely new. So when we look at the options here, we have update now and we can also update tonight. So when we click on update tonight, it will basically download and prepare and attempt to install later in the nighttime. So we're going to click on cancel here because we want to see other information about this. Now back to the automatic updates thing. If we click on this little eye here, if you're an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, you need to go in here and turn these off. Every update you should check to make sure these are off so you don't get into the version mismatch error while patching because the update is downloading behind the scenes and you won't be able to root patch. So that is the new setup here and what's nice is it does show you in here so you don't really have to click more information. It shows you right in this window instead of just showing you this. So let's get this kicked off and we'll document how long it takes to do the install. We'll click on update now, agree, and we'll type in our user password and we'll let it start to download. On our 2018 T2 Mac Mini, we can see the same thing. If you wanna be able to see the size, you can click on that I again, and we can see this is a very small size going from 15.4 to 15.4.1 at 841 megabytes. Let's click on update now, and we'll get these kicked off. All right, we are back up after a really quick update here, and I wanted to show the new software update pane now that we can properly see what it looks like. Our Mac is up to date. We do have a check for update button. We can also do command R to refresh. We see our security responses and our beta updates there if you had turned those on earlier. We can also see our T2 Mac here that was started off at the same time, and we are struggling behind because there's another additional step that Intel Macs have to go through before the update is complete. Normally here, I'll show you the build version with terminal using the SW underscore version command, and we can see the build version here. But with the new window, we got a neat little trick here. If we click on Mac OS Sequoia 15.4.1, we can see the build number appear, 24E263. 
So how long did it take to install the updates? I've tracked every single update since the very first update on 15.0.1. We started the update at 8.27 p.m. It took five minutes to prepare. So a long cry from that 20 minutes that it was originally talking about. Even if Apple was talking about the restart to install time, that only took four minutes of a total of nine minutes, way under the 20 minute estimation time. It also falls in line with the previous hotfix point releases and security updates. Now let's take a look at our Mac Mini T2 Intel 2018. And actually Apple just yesterday mentioned that they added the 2018 Mac Mini to the vintage product list. Now if we take a look here, what Apple says is that service parts may be obtained for longer, but as required by law for up to seven years. And after that mark, after the seven years, it gets put on the obsolete list, which they say obsolete products are considered when Apple stops distributing them for sale for more than seven years ago. And Apple discontinues all hardware service for obsolete products and service providers cannot order parts for obsolete parts anymore. Apple laptops are maybe eligible for extended battery only repair for a period up to 10 years. Unfortunately for our Mac mini, we're getting close to the end and I wonder what that will look like for Mac OS 16. Does that mean that it's not gonna be on 16? Is Intel not gonna be supported for Mac OS 16? Let me know in the comments what you think. I think Apple's gonna give Intel one more year and then after that, they're done. But again, we don't know what the, what the possible rumored redesign, what's gonna happen, but it'll be interesting to see. For this installation, it took 19 minutes total and you can see how much longer it took for the install that compared to our Apple Silicon Mac, but it puts it right in line with our previous point release updates. But it's also very close to the feature rich releases like 15.4 and 15.3. Now let's take a look at what's new in the Mac OS Sequoia 15.4.1 update. If we are looking here at the what's new in updates page, we can see this update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. Now you know if you're a veteran watcher of this channel, you know I love patch notes and I really wish Apple would provide detailed patch notes, especially when we have the patch notes group over with Logic Pro. We know that Apple can provide amazing patch notes all we need to do is get whoever's writing these to come on over to the Mac OS side. With this, we do have two additional places that we can check. So we can look over in the security content page and we can see that we have a security page for Mac OS Sequoia 15.4.1 and we can see two vulnerabilities were patched and we have different CVEs associated with them for core audio and RPAC. When we look at these updates, we look at to see if they've been exploited in the wild. And in this case, we do have a message here. Apple is aware that a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals on iOS. Now, I don't know why they put iOS, it's macOS, but there you have it, and that's on both. With the CVE, that means that it's published and you can view them on multiple pages, for example, in this, and you can see more detail about the security updates. Now, when we go back, we wanna find out if there's any bug fixes in this release. We head on over to our enterprise notes, and you know that I go over enterprise notes because I support macOS in the enterprise, and this is for education and government agencies too. And look what we got here, improves reliability, when installing macOS updates. Now, I'm glad Apple put this here, but this is a handful. And, and I know because we were dealing with this in the environment and users were dealing with this in the environment and Apple really doesn't go into too many details telling users what the actual problem was. When it's under enterprise notes, that's great, but I know for a fact that users have reported in Reddit and other places that they were having trouble updating to 15.4. And after a bunch of testing, I now know which Macs and which versions this was causing problems with. So let's jump into that. So here's an example. This Reddit thread was posted, can't update M1 MacBook Pro to Sequoia 15.4. And the post, has anybody else experienced this? They tried to install the update. And what would actually happen is the Mac would come back up and it would still be on 15.3.2 or 15.3.1 and it would show that it had a kernel panic. In that situation, what was unknown at the time is that machine was gonna be no longer able to update at all, it's done. And what I mean by that is if you tried to install the update again, it would continue to fail. Some users have actually tried to download the full installer and run the full installer, and the problem is that also fails. And so in this situation, the only thing that would work is a DFU reinstallation and wipe of 15.4 on the device and that would be fine. After investigation, 
I've got a test machine here and I was able to at least do a partial workaround. So here's our machine that I was able to reproduce the issue on a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro processor. 15.3.2 is installed on here and I attempted to install the update through software update. It flat out failed, came back up, and here is the kernel panic. The information that you're looking for to verify that you're in this situation is can't ignore lock validation. Now you might have heard me talk about iBoot and firmware in previous videos and this is where this comes in handy a lot of people wonder why i keep track of all these different versions and this is one of the reasons why so if we take a look at my website this is where i keep track of the apple silicon firmware updates for each mac os release now you can see here on 15.4 it was updated 11881 101.1 from mac os sequoia 15.32 and 15.321 and the apple silicon os loader or iboot was also updated what iboot is is it's the version of the operating system that is booted up for example with the latest version of mac os installed it should match the firmware and the iboot should match but on a mac os sequoia or mac os ventura it's going to have the latest firmware but the os loader version is going to be one and then two versions behind and that's normal but for this machine after the failed update happened, look what we have here. We have a system firmware version that was actually updated even though the update failed. So the firmware updated, but the update to finish fully failed out. But when it came back up, we now have a version mismatch. The OS loader didn't get updated because we didn't finish the 15.4 update. Where this comes in important is, is that all updates will fail in this situation, no matter what. But if you use the full installer, it will also fail too because the system firmware is already updated. The way I was able to prove that out was is that I use Apple Configurator 2 to downgrade the system firmware with the revive option with the full IPSW file of 11.3.2. Once that happened, then I was on an equal version of OS Loader 81.4 and system version 81.4. I used the full installer and that's how I was able to fix the devices. Now, if that sounds crazy, it sure is, but lucky enough, most Mac admins were reporting this into Apple and they already jumped into getting a fix put into place. Just today, that's what we have. So M1 or MacBook Pro, what it seems to be is that any device that was on macOS Sonoma that upgraded to macOS Sequoia, whether 15.3.1 or 15.3.2, that's how you were able to trigger the issue. If you updated to Sonoma 14.7.5, it would also fail to upgrade. So those are the two situations that you could be in to trigger the issue. You had to be on Sonoma, and then you had to get updated to 14.7.5 or 15.3.1 or 15.3.2 with this firmware version 101.1, and then you would trigger the issue and you would flat out fail. The good news is, is that Apple has put this fix into play and it will fix you if you're in this position right here. All you need to do is start the update again, install for update and update to 15.4.1, install for update and you see that is available right here. Or if you haven't updated to 15.4 at all in that situation, you're okay because the update is now fixed and you won't have an issue again. This was a very complex issue that was affecting a lot of users and actually a lot of users in our environment. But it was really tricky to figure out because we looked at the statistics and half of the environment were, was up, or even more, maybe 60 to 70% of the environment was updating just fine. It wasn't until we found out that it was the machines that were on Sonoma first, Apple Silicon only, it did not affect Intel, that we started to be able to figure out what was going on here. So this is a wild ride and I'm glad that Apple was able to jump in and work with Mac admins to get this issue fixed. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this issue. I know I went into a lot of detail here, but I thought you would think it was interesting to know the back side of what enterprise admins for supporting macOS and users were going through when they were having this issue. Now that we've shown how important it is to actually keep track of the firmware on the iBoot and the BridgeOS versions when something goes wrong, let's take a look at the 15.4.1 update and see if Apple actually updated anything. And they did not update the Apple Silicon firmware, so it must have been included inside the update to fix the issue. So it's still 11.881, 101.1, same as 15.4, same with the iBoot. And in the T2 BridgeOS side, 
was not updated, same version as 15.4, and the T2 Intel firmware was also the same as 15.4. Now on the Safari side, usually when we get security updates, we see updates to Safari, but in this particular case, and there was no updates to Safari, it is still on 18.4, 15.11.10, the same as 15.4. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores on the T2 Mac Mini on 15.4. We had a 1577 and a 6783 on the multi. And when we went to 15.4.1, a 1560 and a 6742. And remember, we're looking for big swings. We should see a little bit of variation, but not a big up or down. We are also running this after everything is installed with no apps, full battery, and the spotlight indexing has finished. On our M1 MacBook Air, a 2380 and an 8773 and a 2402 and an 8782. Now, if you're running an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and you want to install 15.4.1, let's do a quick preview of the update. The current release as of this taping is still 2.3.1 released two weeks ago. And if we look at the release here for the kernel debug kit, there is not a kernel debug kit so far that Apple has released. We've seen in a couple of the previous releases that Apple has released it later, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. If you have a kernel debug kit Mac, you will not see the kernel debug kit load until Apple has released it. Now, if you have a Mac that uses the Metal Live support package, there is one available, so you will see that for 15.4.1, and that will download. Now, if you want to keep track of the status of the KDK or the Metal Live support package, I always update the status here. For example, we're still waiting on the 15.4. 4.1 KDK like we just mentioned, but we do have the Metal Lib support package. I put the status and the pages here. Macs that I've done testing on, I put them here as soon as they're complete. And these are the two that we're going to take a look at next. So now let's take a look at our example unsupported Macs. We have our Metal supported Mac, our 2013 Mac Pro. We're running the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patch at 2.3.2. We updated to 15.4.1 and we can go into system settings and we can see that reflected in the new software update pane here. And we have installed 15.4.1. It still will check and it has our check mark that we are fully up to date on 15.4.1. We can see in the KDK folders, library developer for KDKs that we did not get the 1541 and we can also see in the log in the users your user folder library logs to Atania and we can take a look at the logs and we can see right here that when it pulled the list from the KDK support package API there was no direct match for 14.4.1 so the closest match was one version behind 15.4 and that was fine and everything is running good on this Mac Pro 2013. Now for our non-metal test, we've got our late 2011 17-inch MacBook Pro. We are running 15.41232 Open Core Legacy Patcher. And just like our Mac Pro, we did not get the KDK. Our software update shows that we are fully up to date on 15.4.1. Our two initial tests did run A-OK. -okay. We'll have to keep an eye on and see if the kernel debug kit is released by Apple a couple days later or even tomorrow. If it is, then all you need to do is go back into Open Core Legacy Patcher and click post install root patches and then once this loads click start root patching again it will pull down the kdk and get you all squared away now keep an eye out for my 15.4.1 and Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.3.2 testing video that I usually do the next day for unsupported Macs. This video is mostly focused on what's new in the update and supported Macs. I immediately after start to begin my test of my entire fleet of unsupported Macs against the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher and Mac OS Sequoia 15.4.1. But I've added some new devices and I've brought back my Sonoma, Ventura, and Big Sur systems, and we're gonna put those together because I know a lot of you are still using those systems, so I'm gonna bring those back. So stay tuned for that video within the next day or two. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or comments, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.